Welcome to Engineer Your Space. I'm Isabelle LaRue, your host. In today's episode, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm actually standing in my very empty New York City apartment. I've packed everything up and I've decided to move to Los Angeles to pursue new and exciting opportunities. Now, I'm really excited about moving to Los Angeles, but I'm also really sad about leaving this apartment. Not only has it been a wonderful home for the past three years, it also happens to be where I came up with the idea for Engineer Your Space. And it's also been the source of many projects that you've seen on my show. So before I head off to sunny California, I want to take you on a tour of my apartment before I took it all apart and show you how even though it was a rental, I was still able to make it my own and make it a comfortable and functional home to live and work. So let's get started. When I first moved into my 450 square foot studio apartment, I knew I'd have a couple of challenges to work with. One of them is the open floor plan with only the kitchen and the bathroom being closed off. And the second one is storage. I only had one large and one small closet, so I knew I'd needed more room for my coats and my shoes. So the first thing that I did was to create an entryway by adding bookcases next to the door perpendicular to the wall. And that gave me a place to hang my coats when I walked in, for my shoes, and also for extra storage and bins. Now I was able to use the bookcases in this way by anchoring the tall bookcase to the wall to make it stable. And because the back of bookcases aren't really pretty, they're not finished typically, um, I added some grass cloth to deal with that. And to add a little personality to my front door, I put on these large stripes without paint by using magnetic material that sticks to the metal door. Now the other thing that I wanted to do um, to deal with the openness of the apartment was to create a bedroom area that was visually separate from the rest of the apartment. And I did that by placing the bed on the other side of the bookcases. Now that would have blocked off the closet had I left the door, but I took it off and instead I replaced it with a curtain on a tension rod. Easy solution. Now to complete the visual separation of the bedroom, I added some panels hanging from the ceiling at the foot of the bed. It acts like a wall, but still lets some light through, and it doesn't take up any floor space. And the last thing I had to do to the bedroom was to add some lighting. And because there isn't a whole lot of room for table lamps on either side of the bed, I decided to go with some pendant lamps that I made. They're perfect for bedside reading. Now I have a lot of mementos and pictures and art that I wanted to kind of concentrate in one area. And I did that by making a gallery wall here. And I really didn't follow any rules other than just putting up things that I really love, like this door knocker that I framed. And I also managed to incorporate some hidden jewelry storage with this jewelry box that I made. No one would ever guess that my jewelry is hiding in there. Now on the other side of the hanging divider is the living area. And here there's no overhead lighting, so I added a lot of table lamps and I added some wall sconces that I put on panels to add some architectural interest. It's the perfect lighting for movie night. Now to add some more storage, I tried to always use double duty pieces like this antique trunk that's my coffee table but also has lots of storage inside. Now off of the living room is my favorite part of the apartment, the balcony. I built this really cozy outdoor dining area which is perfect to entertain friends. And because it only takes up half of the balcony, I still was able to enjoy this beautiful view of Manhattan. Now coming back inside the apartment, next to the living area is the dining area. And here I just wanted to add a little bit of architectural interest to the wall. So I built these panels that I incorporated lighting into. It just adds the right ambiance in the evening. Now as you can imagine, I have a lot of tools and materials for my work. So I concentrated my office and work area next to the kitchen. And I put everything, all my tools and supplies in this shelving unit. And I hung my tools on the side on, with pegboard so that I can have easy access to them and have them organized all the time. Now the other thing I really like to do is to jot down some ideas on a whiteboard. But I really don't want to be looking at that when I'm not working. So to deal with that, um, I used a whiteboard decal instead of your typical whiteboard. And I hid it with a picture frame. Next to the office area is the kitchen. It's pretty small and dark and the floor was really dingy too. So to take care of that, um, I actually put in some vinyl tiles with double-sided tape. It's super easy to put on and to take off and it doesn't leave any residue. It's the perfect solution for ugly rental floors. And adding a mirror to the back wall instantly made it look bigger and brighter. And of course, to add more storage to the kitchen because it was lacking a bit in that, um, I used the space above the cabinets and I simply just used some paper boxes that I covered up with contact paper. It's perfect for things that you don't use very often. 
And the best part of all the projects that I did in my apartment is that they were easy to make, easy to take apart, and all I had to do when I was moving out was to patch up a few holes, touch up with paint, and the apartment was exactly the same as when I moved in. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and that it's going to inspire you to decorate your rental like you own it. And if you're interested in finding out some more details about any of the projects that I've shown you today, you can click on the specific links here. And if you're looking for more DIY tips and inspiration, you can go to my website at engineeryourspace.com. And you can also join me on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. So for now, it's so long East Coast, hello West Coast, and I can't wait to share with you my new adventures from sunny California. See you next time.